Have you guys talked to seminarians and young priests about this? You, um, you guys have mentioned it a tiny bit, but if so, what, you know, both how are they processing this and what, what advice is there for the church from their experience right now? Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly have talked to seminarians uh, and newly ordained priests, I think, are kind of an interesting sort of lot to look at as well. Uh, one bishop told me that, you know, he did his first sort of round of listening sessions uh, uh, and one of the newly ordained priests who had just been ordained last uh, spring raised his hand and said, you know, Archbishop, am I going to have to deal with this? You know, I was just ordained, you know, for the foreseeable future. And he said, yeah, buckle up. You've got to deal with this for the rest of your life. That's the sort of reality. So morale, I think, is, you know, incredibly low. Uh, but, you know, most of the folks that uh, are in the seminary have, you know, we hope, done a dutiful discernment period. Uh, and I think, uh, how's, that, how's this for uh, sort of spiritual testing? <laughs> Anybody who signs up to be a priest in 2018 is not doing it for the, you know, the glory or the, or the power that they're going to get or the respect that they're going to get, right? They're signing up to be um, vilified. And what I've seen um, with seminarians who I've spoken with and young priests I've spoken with is a, um, um, a clarity of mission and of purpose. So um, guys who will say together, yeah, we, we see the problems in, in the priesthood that have caused this. We see the dangers of isolation and alcoholism and loneliness. And so we're going to commit to a different way of living insofar as we're able. And we know that we're either going to be kind of the re-evangelists of America or we're not going to have congregations by the time we're dead. And so I've seen just a renewed sort of vigor and commitment on the part of guys who are there. Um, I don't know if there are more or fewer. I, I, I never remember to pay attention to that. But the ones who I've seen there are, are I, I, you know, I'd say true believers and truly committed to the thing. I remember when I was at Cambridge, I had a priest for a tutor who asked me to call him by his first name. At the time, I think I was 22 or something, and he was probably 34. And to me, that seemed like a huge difference. Um, he said, oh, just call me John. And I was like, no, never. I would never call a priest by their first name. It's always father this or father that. And I didn't realize at the time the loneliness um, that can be part of the vocation and that it can be nice to just kind of have a friend. And so in talking to priests and seminarians, um, especially newly ordained priests right now, I mean, I'm t a lot of these guys are around my age. Um, so I've just tried to be there as a friend, um, bring people over for dinner. Um, I know it's as difficult uh, for them as it is for the lay faithful and in many ways more difficult or differently so. Um, and so there has to be an accompaniment there from the lay faithful, I think. <laughs> 